All right, welcome back. It's time for us to talk entertainment. I have here with me uh, what a lot of people have called the breakout star <laughs> of 2020, 2019, whichever year it is you watched the great movie Living in Bondage, the remake. Jide uh, Kene Achufusi, how are you doing? I'm good, bro. Uh, good to see you. I mean, you, your movie came out 2019, I believe. Uh, 2020, you won the year MVCA. Congratulations. And then we went into a lockdown. Everybody, you couldn't now enjoy, you know. <laughs> Was that painful for you, seeing that, I mean, you had just, you know, come into the space and then you couldn't particularly live the life of, you know, this new life that you had just acquired? Well, I had a couple of interviews lined up for a start and for, you know, publicity and all of that but I'm, I'm, I'm thankful yeah because um, one thing I was able to take away from being locked down is you know patience it had given me the opportunity to think through a lot of things you know things I wanted to just jump into you know let's get it but you know it allowed me to you know relax more have a general overview of what the industry is like at the different level so yeah it was a good time for reflection yeah and uh, looking inward so in as much as i missed up um you know what and what i could have i could have been able to achieve over that period of time but grateful for life yeah because yeah. you also use it to build exactly and a lot of people think that's your first movie but it's not <laughs> you have been in the industry for quite a bit you know when did you start Professionally, uh, 2013. Okay. Yeah, professionally, but you know we've been doing the whole trying to get a contact of somebody in the real industry. You know, <laughs> have, I'm the first person in the arts in my entire family, so uh, it, it was not on the back of anybody. We know anybody, you know. So I, uh, 2013 till now, it's been a journey. You know, recently I had a movie come out on Netflix, Black Rose, that we made in 2015. So it's it's amazing, you know, just looking back and seeing that oh. Boy has been good. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of the right time and the right platform yeah. to be able to expand. You were living in Inugu. Yes. Did you have to move here? After living in Bondi, yes. Yeah. So did you, Inugu is also sort of a thriving space for movies. Um, why did you feel the need to move? Does Lagos have to be the place where it happens? Uh, because we hear Inugu a lot. We hear Asaba sometimes. You know, we hear about Kano. But everybody always seems to say, okay, you have to sort of be here to, you know, make it as big as you'd like to. So the easiest way to explain that is, for example, if granite grows in Kano, but the products that you get to make from granite, let's assume maybe some drink or whatever, the processing plants, the places where there's the power, the, the money power, the, the publicity power, the television channels, the interviews, you wouldn't come to Enugu to interview me, you know? <laughs> so yeah, Enugu is great for churning out and producing talents, but Lagos is the hub. You know, Lagos is where you're most likely to run into a South African filmmaker or an Indian filmmaker or an American or a British filmmaker. The chances, the odds, it's better yeah. here. That's, that's the reason why people move here, that's all. But if we're able to, you know, create more whatever industries or meetings, you know, yeah. instead of all the headquarters to be in Lagos, if some international companies decide to come settle in, in Soka, yeah. somewhere beautiful, somewhere in the hill, yeah, people yeah. wouldn't really need to come all the way So you don't here. think that's a good thing, the fact that everything is here? Um, well, there's New York, there's LA, you know, that's the problem we have in Nigeria. We don't have two points, you know, we don't have places that we know, oh, if you want to make a film, go to Atlanta, but if you want to, you know, do the Beverly Hill lifestyle, go to LA and stuff. So I think Lagos is everything and it's not, it's not so good because um, we're not looking for anything unfortunate to happen, but at some point saturation leads to everybody moving in uniform lines, you know. So sometimes when you see a film that comes from uh, an Inugu filmmaker, it's usually quite different, you know, in terms of how they understand or, or what, you know, how they want to tell a story. So most times, you know, I think diversity is better. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about living in bondage now. I know you've had tons of interviews about living in bondage, tons and tons of yeah. them. But I just asked that because I remember, you know, when the talk about the remake had started, a lot of us had very, you know, emotional attachments, you know, to this original original, you know, movie that came out in 1993, I believe. Um, and there was a call for people to submit videos or something along those lines. What made you do it? <sighs> well, being someone who has come from Enugu several times by road to Lagos to audition for different platforms, different auditions from Ebony Life to Tinsel and the rest of them, I, um, I didn't want to do it, to be honest, because um, I felt like deja vu all over again. 
So I didn't want to do it, but um, eventually um, I got a call and they said that I match the physical description of who they were looking for. So it was more or less a special invitation to submit a video. At that point, I thought, okay, yes, now I can do this. And to be honest, uh, you know, it's, 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 it wasn't different from you know, the same amount of uh, pressure when making the video. Are they going to like it? Is it good enough? Yeah, went through exactly the same thing everybody else went through. Because even after I submitted the video, I still had to physically audition with the director when they came to town because they actually did like a nationwide uh, tour looking for uh, the talent that they needed. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know about anybody else who was almost getting the role? Well, I had names, really big names, to like. be honest. <laughs> 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 I had names like the, our Igbo brothers who were doing so well. People I look up to, I had a lot of names. And in my mind, you know, I don't know if I believed, yeah. but I know that. I was giving it 110, yeah, 110 percent, and somewhere, somehow, a little birdie did say that they didn't want anybody popular. So I'm like, okay, maybe that <laughs> let's see help. how this goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a blessing in disguise for exactly, you. Right? Exactly, exactly. That you hadn't blown before that. I, I hadn't moved to Lagos before that because <laughs> if I had moved to Lagos, one way yeah. or the other, they would know you. You know, the biggest problem we have in Hollywood is stereotyping. You know, we if it's if it's ghetto movies that's going now, everybody will go into ghetto movies. Yeah. It's love or comedy. Let's go. You know, we don't really do. Okay, we have a plan or we have a structure. Or let's see what that. that. It's all about the money. You know. So, uh, if I had come to Lagos before the time I did, I would probably have done one role so well, and everybody else would put me on that kind of role. And that usually is the case when we look at most veteran actors, you know. Yeah. We usually don't have anybody who has done a lot of things. It's either you have been doing richer money, stay richer money. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so many names just came to mind now. So <laughs> that's why I'm giggling. But, okay. you know, so you, you did the movie, you know, of course got nominated for an AMVCA for Best Actor. Ended up winning the Trailblazer Award. Congratulations okay. on that. Were you surprised at how, did you know you did that well? When you were when you were doing it, <sighs> to be honest, or when you watched it, when did you feel like okay, yes, I killed this thing, or was it feedback from people? Um, I would <laughs> say that it started from when we were filming. There's one day my producer was like, ah, superstar, and then the other producer was like, don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> so in that moment, I was like, okay, these guys they watch the rushes. Yeah, you know, when I was in school, things. if I write exams, I'm not the kind of student that comes out to check it if I have failed or if I have failed a particular question. Some people do that. They'll pick up their book immediately. So I never really want to go and watch the rushes or what we have shot. So they have invited me to come and look at it. So to be honest, um, the vibe really did dawn on me at the premiere, you know, after the movie had finished and everybody, you know, people I have known or I had known and I looked up to wanted to get a handshake or a photograph and stuff. Yeah, that was when like, you know, people were like, oh, we want to sign you, we want to talk to you about this. That's when I was like, okay, hold on. I think I did it, you know, <laughs> yeah, because you never really want to have that in the back of your mind yeah. while filming. That always never works out well. Because, I mean, if I've done 10 films before living in bondage, I always believed that I put in 150 and that something was going to come from them. But, you know, it was yeah. never really the case. I agree with you because I saw Black Rose recently and I was like, okay, this movie is not even, it's what, five, six years ago. Yeah. And, you, I mean, as much as you were not the lead character, but, I mean, you still did an amazing job. But is there now more pressure on you? Uh, I mean, so, yeah, this living in bondage guy who did excellently now. So you come to, I mean, you did Can't Believe. Was it Can't Believe yeah, before Can't after believe. that? After that, yeah. After that. So I mean, you've been called out to do other roles. Is there not more pressure you feel to say, okay, I have to always at least do this great? Well, the real pressure actually happens in my DM, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. Some people would send you voice recordings where their dad would speak, their mother would speak, their sister would speak, because it's a story that really touched family stories and, you know, family lives. And when you hear an entire family even send you a video and just say, you know, please, you are the best thing that happened to Nollywood. Don't ever stop. Don't ever go below this. You begin to realize that, okay, hold on, hold on. In as much as you are passionate about this, and as an Inugu boy, I've gotten used to making films out of passion, to be honest. Like, you know, there's no money in the industry. Oh, please, you have a great script. Let's do this. You know, so uh, it, the pressure now is to f keep flying high. You know, just like somebody who has gone through a lot and then become rich, the biggest fear will be to start afresh, you know. But like they always say, if you know what you're doing, you're not going to be afraid to start afresh, you know. So I look at every day as 
an opportunity to make better on what Living in Bondage has already offered. But my, my biggest concern is with the quality. Uh, I don't know if, I, if I'm using the right word, but let me just say the type of scripts that have been offered now. So now I have to choose, okay, I think people have seen me in this capacity. And because I think I'm a versatile actor, I want to try comedy. I want to try other things, you know, so instead of just the steeped in drama or, you know, something like that. So most times, like I said about stereotyping, they, 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 you know, your frame or your size would also be considered when, you know, letting you do a particular role. I remember Black Rose, I had to play two scenes or one scene in a movie in 2012 to be able to convince the director that I could actually work or pass for a mechanic. Because he was like, no, 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 you're too fresh for this. You can't be a mechanic. I'm like, just give it to me. You understand? So if you've seen Black Rose, you would know that, you know, I did my best at the time. I was a professional model then, you know, to make sure that I looked the part, you know. So, yeah, the biggest problem now is what you're being offered. And you can't keep saying no for a long time yeah. because the fans don't really know that, oh, you've been getting scripts and you're not taking them. They just wonder, where are you? That's all they know. You know, where has it been? Oh, you don't come out for the limelight, you know? So you also need to take some jobs for the sake of relevance, you know? So we're getting to the place or our industry is gradually moving towards a direction where eventually we'll become uh, comfortable enough to do one job in five years. <laughs> how far away yeah. do you think we are there? Because you see, you take some things for relevance or... Uh, how, I want to talk about money now, because you've mentioned it here, even, you know, you will do things in Enugu just for the passion. I know people here who say they have to do so many movies so yeah. that they can keep up because they pay for one movie can sustain you. Um, so how is that going? You know, you are now uh, an actor, full-time actor, you're in Lagos. I mean, Lagos life is definitely more expensive than Enugu life. Yes. So money has to come into the conversation. The Nollywood pay... Is it a valid conversation for you as well, where you know you feel like things are really not as good as they should be? Well, to be honest, from where I've come from, I'm pretty comfortable, but you can't dwell on your past. So you have to focus on what you're able to achieve moving forward. So having said that, um, I like to also not just be the pretty face on TV. I like to do my the mathematics and do the film business. So taking some classes, lectures, asking questions, reading materials, would tell you that um, I think 77 cinemas in Nigeria, maybe right, right about that number. So 77 cinemas as compared to 50 something thousand cinemas in either India or USA, you're going to see that we're not making the amount of money we ought to be making. You know, we're still struggling to hit one billion naira. And if you convert one billion naira to in the cinemas, I mean, if you convert that to um, um, dollars, you see that ah, we're not really scratching what our you know other uh, colleagues are doing. And do we have the audience or the number of people? We do, but we just don't have the right strategy yet to position cinemas, especially community cinemas in India. Every street has one cinema, you know. So we don't have that um, wherewithal yet to be able to establish what we need to be able to make sure that we are seeing the money that we are asking for. So I just want, I just don't want to be the actor on Twitter who's saying. Oh, pay us better or do this, you know, carrying. Yeah, I want to be able to understand why aren't why isn't there enough money out there? So the honest truth is, uh, there, there's not because there's not enough cinemas, there's not enough revenue, there's not enough conversations around the fact that actors have to step up and stop being pretty faces on this screen, get involved, produce something, um, um, contribute something, um, you know, so most actors have to lay back and uh, depend on um, being uh, influencers to be able to make ends meet, you know, but generally, you know, movies should be able to lead actors or people who have gotten to a certain level of industry should be able to make a lot more than they are yeah. making right now. Do you think a lot of people understand this though? A lot of your colleagues understand the fact that the money conversation is a certain way because of the way things are set up. Not everybody understands yeah. that part of the conversation because if you read the articles, you know, most of us just like to watch videos, you know, but if you actually do read the numbers, statistics, you would see that at the end of the day, the, the amount of money that uh, distributors take and the one that the cinemas take, if, for example, a movie makes 100 million in the cinemas and the cinema takes 40% and distributors take maybe 10, 15, 20, depending on what the conversation is, sometimes cinemas will take up to 60 and the producer is left with 35% or 40% of what you've heard in the cinemas. That 40%, he still has investors to pay back. And by the time he's done paying back, what's the take home for all the work that you have done? 
you understand, to be able to prepare yourself for the next project. So numbers don't add up yet. Do you think the industry is doing enough, though, to sort of surmount this? Where I'm talking actively, with, there's a lot of guilds, you know, that, that exist. There's people who have been in the industry for decades now. Do you think there's a conscious effort, you know, to actually invest, even from maybe from governments even? Do you, do you find that things are looking in the right direction? Because 77 cinema rooms in 2021 is a little, is more than a little, is, it's not where we should be. Yeah. Do you find that we're, we're, we're heading somewhere? Um, the guilds are not working. First of all, <laughs> to put that out there, you're not working because, um, I mean, it's very far away, a dream of mine to be able to be at the helm of affairs or to be able to govern things or to be able to advise whoever is governing things with guilds. Yeah. I think, first of all, before guilds ask you to register and to spend money and to be with them, I think, first of all, what they need to do is to show you that they can cater for you, they can care for There's you. There's a benefit to yeah. you. Yeah, so structure, that's what's missing. Structure is what says that um, you're not just going to go to your house and make a film and come out and sell. Because at the end of the day, when somebody makes a great film, and he says, oh, I'm not going to sell this film for anything below 100 million. And that person says, oh, don't mind that guy. Come and take for 5 million. That's the problem we're having. We yeah. were talking about piracy for a long time. That's what killed the DVD industry, you know. And now that the DVDs have phased out, there's no such machines in the supermarkets anymore, we are now forced to look back at the cinema industry that we refuse to foster all the while. And uh, in that same space, we have movies that ought not to be on the, in the cinemas, making it to the cinemas for certain reasons that we, we I don't have the experience or the you know clearance to discuss as to why. But um, I believe that... Um, Government isn't helping enough. Um, at least last year, the, the governor of Lagos State was able to stop the regulation that was going to take 10% of anything anybody makes, and that's a great progress. But um, we'd, love to, we'd love to see more. We'd love to see more internationals invest. We'd love to see... We have Nigerians, rich Nigerians, who have studios in LA, and we don't have a single movie village in the entire country. For a, con for a country that boasts the most number of films produced in a year as the highest industry above the U.S. and the India, I'd like to think that we should have at least 10 of those kind of movie villages. You know, instead of people to spend money in Lagos traffic moving from one location to another, they can actually settle down in one place and make a better film, you know? So that's, that's part of the problem. Now, little conversations always fascinate me, and <laughs> we could go on and on today. But let's just wrap up what you're talking about. You know, 2021, what should we be looking forward to with, with you, your brand, and, you know, what's coming? Um, I'm working on um, a couple of projects for 2021. There's Lockdown with Moses Inwang. There's... Um, some other ones that are still, you know, under the table, conversing. I'm not an easy person to convince anyways, because yeah. uh, I like to think that I bring a lot of things to the table. So I also am working on a project of my own that I'm looking to collaborate. Product producing? Because, hmm? Producing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. So because I, I'm, I'm hoping, I, I know that the secret, part of the reason why we're not making so much progress in this industry in terms of revenue is lack of collaboration. There's always almost either one production house and one person putting money together. But when you watch American movies and you see the list of executive producers, you can tell that a lot of money was pumped into that. So I'm hoping to create uh, something soon, you know, or hopefully I can talk about it soon when I'm able to. Yeah, but um, maybe I'm looking to. There's no content for kids. There's no content for middle-aged uh, students, high school, yeah, yeah so college. Yeah. That. So I'm hoping to create content around what's missing. Looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Jide Kenneth, for being you. here today. Um, more greatness, Thank more you. money, even if you're not particularly <laughs> conscious of that. But please, we need to make that money. <laughs> we do, we do. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We'll take another break and be right back. Don't go away.